Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at DNS. So DNS stands for Domain Name Systems. And uh, I mean, the way I'm conceptualizing it is that it's a service that is responsible for translating or resolving a service name to its IP address. So this is in the context of Kubernetes because DNS stuff is um, complicated, uh, uh, so to say. Um, and we could spend, I don't know, like a micro course just talking about DNS, but I just want to focus on that last part, translating or resolving a service, so a Kubernetes service name to an IP address. And so for um, a domain name system, it's not uncommon to have like a table of things that point to things. So we would have a service registry. And so in the context of Kubernetes, this would be the service name, and this would be uh, the static IP address that is assigned to it. So um, you know, the idea is that if you were to uh, use that service name or registry, like with an HTTP request, um, or just use a, a tool that allows you to uh, look up DNS records, like if you were trying to resolve where front name would go, that it should resolve to that IP address. So now we need to know about core DNS. So core DNS is the default DNS server for Kubernetes. In the documentation, you might see something that's called cube DNS, and that was the default prior to that. Uh, and it was replaced because it wasn't that modular or had great plugin support. And so core DNS is the current default. You can swap it out, but this is the one you'll want to use because it's pretty good. And it ensures that pods and services have fully qualified domain names, FQDNs, and without core DNS, the cluster communication would cease to work because it just would not know how to resolve things to things. And uh, you might ask, what is a fully qualified domain name? So it's a domain name that specifies its exact location in the tree hierarchy, also known as an absolute domain. Probably a visual would help there, but you know it's not that important. What's important to remember is that uh, we have this table of service registry and there's a way to look up uh, DNS. And of course there is DNS, like let's say you're using an AWS and you had Route 53, which is um, a DNS service um, that uh, allows you to register a domain and then forward that domain making record sets to point to stuff. And so, you know, that is like, again, another level of DNS and it can integrate into core DNS and things like that. But um, this DNS is just for stuff within the cluster, okay? So uh, let's look at the functionality that is provided by Core DNS because there are in-tree plugins, internal plugins, and then um, out-of-tree plugins, so things you can add on. And so this will give me an idea of the things that uh, Core DNS can do other than just resolving uh, you know, a domain name to an IP address. So we have ACL, so enforce access control policies on source IP and prevents unauthorized access to DNS servers. Any, so uh, any given minimal response uh, to uh, this anything. Azure, so enable uh, server zoning data from Microsoft Azure DNS. That's what I'm talking about, those integrations with those cloud service providers. Cache enables a front end cache. Health enables a, a health check endpoint, something that you'd be very common with if you were, uh, again, Route 53, they have health checks built in. So now this is at the um, cluster level. Log, so enable uh, query logging to standard output and many more such as like, I think AWS would be in there, like Web53 and things like that. So out of tree plugins, Git, Alias, uh, RE disk. So enabled cache uh, using Redis, uh, Kubernetes, <laughs> serve multiple uh, Kubernetes uh, within a server and many more. So, you know, hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of how robust this thing is and how modular it is. Now, let's just talk about some tooling that uh, we should know, especially if we're debugging this stuff. Not something that we really need to do at, in the KCNA level, but uh, it's just practically very good to know. So core DNS pods are abstracted by a service object called cube DNS. Remember, everything in Kubernetes is pods. So core DNS are pods that run in the cube system. And um, I don't know if I wrote this anywhere, but it's very important to remember that core DNS or whatever DNS thing that you want to use lives in the control plane node. When we were looking at a diagram, that was the one thing I forgot to put in there. I didn't have to get, update the graphics. So I'm just reiterating on that again. Each pod, uh, and not just any pod, uh, uh, like, sorry, when I say each pod, we don't just mean core DNS pods, we mean any single pod has this resolve.com file to help with DNS resolving. Now, this isn't uh, a Kubernetes specific thing. This is just a Linux thing where um, you will have this file uh, on your, I don't know if it's in virtual machines, but it's definitely in containers. But if you were to cat it out, like print the con uh, contents of it. So here we're logging into that pod, that container, sorry. 
And uh, we do that, it's gonna show the name server, so what we are in terms of the IP address, and then um, you know the domain names that would resolve to this um, pod, okay? So notice it says default SVS, cluster local, things like that. And another really useful tool is using NS lookup. So NS lookup, name server lookup is a way that we can discover uh, or see where things resolve. So like, remember I said, there's a service registry that contains a service name and a, um, and a uh, IP addresses. So we could dump an IP address in here and then it would hit the core DNS and be like, what'd you find? And this is what I found, right? Or you could supply the service name or the full service name because this is just like a part of the name, right? The real name would be like really long like this, okay? Um, so just notice like how long it is and like how short that is. Um, but again, you know, a little bit outside the scope of the KCNA, but good to know, um, uh, you know, in general, okay?